Greetings YouTube, JC here in the wee small hours with another video about audio. And this time around I want to talk about MP3s. MP3s have gotten a really bad reputation, but they're capable of doing very high fidelity audio if you encode them properly and use the right encoder. And we're going to talk about that right now. Now, my audio ripper of choice is a program called Audio Grabber. And Audio Grabber is free and available on the web. Now, the reason why most MP3s don't sound good is because two things happen. First of all, they're not encoded properly. And second of all, they're not being used with the right codec at the right bit rate for the audio being encoded. And so, therefore, the result is awful. And that's why there's so many bad sounding MP3s out there. So, let's get right into talking about ways that you can get the most out of MP3 audio. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to show you, I have used to make MP3s that are on the air on radio stations all across the country. It's part of my freelance work, and uh, I've done some stuff uh, where I've distributed uh, songs and commercials and things using this exact system and uh, nobody can tell the difference. As a matter of fact, I've played MP3s right next to CDs on the air and you can't hear the difference. So this makes very high quality MP3s. First of all, let's talk about normalizing. Normalizing is a function that a ripper will do that will allow you to set an audio level that it will try and get whatever audio it goes into to be at when it hits the codec of the MP3. Now this particular one will do a peak normalize or an average normalize. A peak normalize just goes through and finds the loudest part of the song and then sets that to whatever value this is in the output file. And if you take everything that you uh, rip and peak it to 98 percent and then just play back the files, the difference in uh, the uh, sound level between songs is going to be vast. Well, it's not good for your ears, but it's great for the MP3 codec. I don't recommend doing an average uh, level normalize at this stage. And the reason is, is that the codec needs to get audio at the highest peak level it possibly can without distortion. That is 98% of uh, modulation being 100% is when you run out of numbers in digital. 98%, you need to go ahead and set it there. And the reason why is that MP3 codecs, when driven at 100%, will distort. So we want to put it at 98%, okay? And we want to avoid doing any average normalizing or averaging of the audio at this point. We'll do that later on, and I'll show you how to do it with another program. So we have our normalizer set up to 98%. If your CD, if your uh, MP3 ripper does not have the uh, normalize function, go get another one because it makes a huge difference. That codec really needs to have uh, the right audio driven into it. Next, let's talk about the codec itself. My preferred codec is LAME, L-A-M-E. It is an open source codec and it's available on the web. For my ears, it sounds the best. Um, now, I may generate some controversy saying that, and some people say that other codecs sound better. Sorry, as far as I'm concerned, lame is it. Especially if you're going to do anything that's going to end up in a broadcast situation, lame just is inaudible through a transmitter. So that's why I use it. So we're going to use lame. I avoid variable bit rates because a variable bitrate MP3 or a VBR um, is uh, unplayable in some equipment. If your uh, iPods can handle them just fine, but some off equipment uh, will cut the ends off of them, and if the uh, decode codec is not really good, it can actually make it sound like it's speeding up and slowing down when decoding VBRs. So I avoid them. Use a constant bit rate for, to ensure compatibility, and that way you know it's going to play on anything you give it to. Now choosing a bit rate. Most MP3s that you'll find in people's collection are encoded at 128. 128 regardless of the encoder, is not good enough, period. 192 or higher is CD quality for an MP3, or at least close to it, especially the lame encoder. Lame sounds wonderful at 192 and above. 
record companies tend to distribute MP3s at 256 or 320 to uh, radio stations and professionally. Um, but they make rather large files when you do that. And the quality difference between 192 and 320 is minimal. So I choose 192, especially since I have about 25,000 songs ripped into my computer. And I really need to watch my file size. This will create an average file size of anywhere between 5 and 7 megabytes per song. And I can live with that. Next down here, we're going to uh, look at stereo modes. Now, with LAME, if you are doing, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about this stereo modes. You got mono, you got joint stereo, uh, you got uh, stereo, and then you have dual stereo. What's the difference? In joint stereo, more bits are given to stuff in the middle of the stereo image, like the lead singer, or the guitar, or the bass. And then stuff that's panned all the way to the right or left gets less bits. It's actually a matrix system, also known as mid-side, for those of you who know what that is. And uh, one, the... Uh, the um, Left plus right channel gets more bits than left minus right. That's how that works. Um, it, if you don't have stuff that's particularly wide stereo, you can't hear it. But if you start encoding things like Beatles or Jazz or anything like that with very wide stereo, makes a difference. So stereo is the way to go. Now, what is dual stereo? Dual stereo in LAME is a system where it actually creates two MP3 files. So at 192, we would be creating two 96 kilobit per second MP3s, one for the left and one for the right. And then they're combined together to make a 192 MP3. This does not sound as good as stereo. And the reason why is because in full stereo mode, LAME can steal bits from a channel that doesn't need them and give them to one that does. So if you have complex audio in the right channel but the left channel's not much going on, it can actually take a few bits and throw them over there. So stereo is definitely the best way to go. Uh, dual stereo, the only application that I can think of where it would be useful is if you had a file that contained two completely different things, like a soundtrack that had uh, English and Spanish in the right and left channels and you were going to switch between the two. So avoid that. Down here you see your quality settings. This should be as obvious as whatever. Set it to high. And with the lame encoder, they have a normal setting and a high setting. Always choose the high setting. It does make a difference. Some lame front ends, which is what you're looking at here, this is called the encoder front end, will actually say high and super high. Choose super high. Now, down here, these bits, most um, uh, uh, encoders or, or decoders ignore this completely. However, the one to avoid is CRC. Don't check that bit, because some audio editors, when they see the CRC bit checked, uh, that means each frame is uh, saying CRC, it may cause you a problem. So ignore that, and, and, just, and make sure that this is, un uh, the only one that I check is original for obvious reasons. So we're set up. Let's rip a song. While this is, I don't, you can check the properties of a song here uh, using this. This will allow you to change um, exact, you can, you, you know, take a couple of seconds of silence off the end, all kinds of stuff, change the title, whatever you want to do. But I'm good with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I am going to uh, rip this song. Now, the information that you see here was gotten from freedb.org when I put the CD in. And the one thing that, it changed, that I got that I didn't like was this. I'm going to change this and type in the name without the comma. I don't particularly like that. Now, your naming convention, the one that I use is the standard naming convention, artist space hyphen space title. That's what I use. Other people use different ones, but the professional standard is uh, artist space hyphen space title. And there's a reason for that. We'll get into that in just a second. Now, let's go ahead and rip our song so we can see how it does its thing. Now, we're ripping our song. First, it's going to read it off the CD. And that'll take it a few seconds. And yes, this CD has a little bit of processing on it, so it's quite loud. And as you can see, the peak level's at 100%. So we really need to knock that back down to 98 so that the uh, codec doesn't get overloaded and then just normalize the track right there. After it's done doing that, it is going to encode the track and turn it into an MP3. And here we go.
So now we have created our MP3 and let's make sure that it showed up where we wanted it to. I have told it that I want to put it in the My Music folder and there we have it. And as a matter of fact we have an MP3 and we have a WAV file. There's our MP3 and there is our WAV file. Now you can configure it not to save the WAV, delete the WAV after uh, it uh, creates the MP3. Actually that got unchecked while I was setting up to do this video. I normally don't keep the WAV file for any reason. But there we have our MP3. Now we're going to stop here and I hope you'll continue on to part two where we're going to talk about setting the average gain of our mp3s and tagging them. So JC waving bye bye for just a minute while you click on part two of making high quality mp3s.